What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be doing a scene breakdown of our recently uploaded Blender 3D Jet Explosion visual effects breakdown. This is not really a tutorial video, but I will be going through the process on how this visual effects shot was created inside of Blender and the various concepts we applied to create it. Anyways guys, let's get started inside of Blender. As you can see here, we have our 3D jet here, modeled by Chris Kuhn. We downloaded his model on BlendSwap. Check him out in the link in the description. He's a really great 3D artist. And uh, yeah, this is our starting scene here. This jet comes fully rigged and ready to animate. As you can see here, this uh, box around the jet is actually what you can use to animate it. So as you can probably guess, that was our first step in creating this animation was actually animating the jet and then having it kind of curve off to the side. And then when it gets hit by the explosion, we animated it to kind of uh, spin a little bit and then go off like it uh, had a forceful impact from that explosion itself and as you can see here if we zoom out we also have our cable cam uh, cinematic movement rig here and what we've done here is we've parented our pan and tilt control to the jet itself so as you can see here wherever we move our pan and tilt control the uh, camera is going to point so what we've done here is we've just parented this pan and tilt control to the jet itself so that our camera is always pointing at the jet no matter where it's going to be just a little bit easier to animate the position of the camera when you know that your camera is always going to be looking at the object that is going to be animated so uh, yeah I'll go ahead and play through the animation here as you can see we've just animated the jet as well as the cable cam to move along the x-axis and then finally at around frame I think I think it's frame 160 we've had the jet turn off and uh, then that's when it gets hit and then as you can see when the jet gets hit we've just animated it spinning off to the side here at the moment of impact and uh, one thing to note when you're creating animations especially relatively simple animations like the, I would say this is a relatively simple animation we're mostly just animating the jet on the z-axis itself is I, I'm, I'm generally trying to animate the major aspects of the animation first so for example the start and end point from the uh, start of the animation to when the jet is about to explode so I'll set an animation at the beginning of the timeline until the explosion is going to start and then I'll animate from the explosion all the way to when the jet kind of goes off screen or whenever we want the animation to end and then after doing that I'll animate some minor adjustments such as the you know rotation of the jet and how the jet's gonna kind of weave a little bit back and forth on the y-axis depending on what I want it to do so that I have the general concept there first and then I can make it a little bit more organic in those minor adjustments and uh, as you can see here if we just go to render and view animation here we can see that I've just animated a little bit of rotation here, but I would have done that as a minor detail after the main aspect of the animation is done. So just uh, mostly just animating the start and end points of different parts of the animation and then adding those final adjustments at the very end, depending on the orientation and how I would expect the jet to move in that situation. And uh, yeah, that was our first step, just animating the jet itself, no explosion yet, just uh, imagining in that animation process where the jet would end up given what we want for the final result. Result. Anyways, the next step I went through was creating the actual smoke and fire explosion for the jet itself. So what I've done here is I've added four smoke fire omnidirectional particle fuel fields. We just use under the chaos tab here the dynamic smoke fire checkbox and several omnidirectional bursts to create a general all around particle explosion. And uh, as you can see here, if we turn the main one on when we scroll through it here to get to the beginning of our explosion, we've actually parented this uh, omnidirectional fuel particle field here to the jet itself so it's actually moving with the jet naturally and we've just put it on the part of the wing that we want to explode and we've done this for all of our smoke fire omnidirectional fuel fields and the reason that we added four particle systems to create this explosion was just to create different aspects of the explosion itself so for example this first particle system is the main and largest part of the explosion and it's going to last fairly briefly but also be a fairly dense particle system to create that gasoline style look and if we go to the particle tab here we've uh, let the lifetime of the particles be fairly short at four but we've increased the number of particles to 2400 to create a pretty dense fuel explosion and uh, if we go to the second and third particle system and turn them on really quick as you can see, these have a lower particle number, so it's a less dense fuel field, and they're lasting a longer lifetime. Instead of a lifetime of four, they're lasting for 10 frames, so they're going out further in our environment, and uh, essentially what that's gonna do is it's kinda gonna create these uh, streaming particles and create a little bit more shape for the explosion itself. And it's also, uh, since we've made their lifetime longer, it's going to make the explosion last a little bit longer and create the feeling that the flame is burning up after the initial blast a little bit more. And finally, for the 
the last fuel particle system. We've just created a very minor, I'll go ahead and turn off the rest of them to show you. So as you can see, we have 680 particles and starting at frame 169, which is actually after the initial blast, as you can see here, and ending at 178. So lasting for almost 10 frames of emission and also a fairly short particle lifetime. So the particles are going to stay relatively close to where the wing is going to explode on our aircraft. So essentially what we're trying to do here is create kind of these trailing particles that as the wing blows up, these particles stay with the aircraft that is kind of going off to the left of frame and kind of create that burning debris type effect and make our aircraft kind of burn a little bit as it goes off into the distance. And it's fairly subtle. You can't really see it too much in the final animation since we made our smoke fairly contrasty, but it's just something we tried to let our smoke and fire kind of be dragged off with the fuselage of the aircraft that we previously animated. So uh, those are the four particle systems here. Just so you get an idea, I'll go ahead and play the preview of just our particle systems on the plane itself so you get an idea of how you can build different aspects of your explosion with various particle debris fields and uh, different lifetimes and you know numbers of particles and different things like that. So anyways, before we simulated the particles inside of Mantaflow with our smoke domain, another thing we did is we turned the airplane model into a collision effector for our fluid simulation for our smoke and fire simulation. As you can see, if we go ahead and select our fuselage here and we go under the physics panel, we've uh, turned it into a fluid effector, effector type collision, and we've done this to the wing as well. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow the 3D model of the airplane to interact with the smoke and fire itself to get a much more realistic result, kind of uh, waving and moving the smoke around as it would in the real world. All right, so after turning on our smoke and fire collision effectors inside the physics panel for our aircraft fuselage, the next thing we did was experiment with different baking settings for our Mantaflow smoke domain. So I'll go ahead and select our smoke domain here and enable it here really quick. And this is our baked Mantaflow simulation here from our fuel particle fields. We baked this simulation at a relatively high resolution divisions, as you can see here. And the reason for this is because we had to actually increase the scale of the smoke domain as well in order to simulate the fire dragging along with the airplane. Normally, I wouldn't put the resolution divisions this high for this scale of a simulation, but because we had to increase the scale of the domain in order to get all of our fuel fields and particles inside of it, we had to increase the relative resolution division size as well. So we did several tests and 600 seemed to be pretty good for our original smoke simulation base mesh. And another thing to keep note of is whenever your particle systems and particles are moving very fast, you may get some uh, weird artifacts whenever you're not using enough resolution divisions because the particles are moving so quickly through the domain cube that the voxels can't really calculate it very accurately. So you might get some kind of weird results. So essentially the rule I use is I start with a very low resolution divisions, maybe 128-ish, and I try to make the domain cube just big enough to surround the particle systems that I have. And then I slowly increase the resolution divisions until I like the initial simulation result, adjusting various domain settings at the same time, depending on if I'm getting the result that I want. And then eventually when I find the resolution divisions that I like, then I will scroll down and uh, bake the high resolution noise on top of that original base mesh for all of that additional detail, which was pretty essential for this specific result. Since even at 600 resolution divisions, because we scaled up the domain cube so much, it actually wasn't a lot for the detail of this explosion. Really that high resolution noise gave it that extra touch and I almost, if there wasn't enough motion blur, I might have increased the up res factor even to three for a little bit more realistic result. But uh, yeah, that was our smoke simulation here. Under shading, we did change the default settings under the chaos fire shader a little bit. We uh, increased the smoke density to 1000 for a really thick result. Also increased the contrast quite a bit for that smoke to cut up the flames a little bit more and then flames brightness at 14 and flames contrast at eight. And we also keyframed our flames bright brightness and contrast over the course of our explosion to get a brighter initial result and then let the flames slowly burn out. Not really uh, too much keyframes, just two keyframes. We just wanted the smoke to uh, appear a little bit thicker at the end of our explosion versus at the beginning, we just wanted a very uh, quick, bright blast. And of course, you, you wanna enhance that with compositing as well, which I will show in another video coming soon. So the next thing I did after baking the fire and smoke simulation with our various omnidirectional fuel fields is I added an explode modifier to our left wing here. And one of the things I think about doing whenever I'm creating some of these explosions is adding different layers of detail. So for example, you can add a lot of different debris fields in our chaos tab here that bring your explosion and add a lot of detail to it. But sometimes it's really nice to actually use the geometry of the thing you're blowing up to create some of that debris and then add your chaos debris 
three fields on top of that for a lot more realism, which is what I did in this video. So what we did here is we isolated the wing geometry of our jet, and then we just did a basic quick explode modifier here. And what that's gonna do is it's going to give you some initial options when you're exploding your wing. For example, how much you wanna break up the wing. Do you wanna break it up into 100 particles, you know, 1,000 particles, however many you want. And then it's gonna give you how much velocity you want behind it, and if you want it to dissolve after a certain point. And once you choose those initial settings in the quick explode option, then automatically a bunch of modifiers are going to be applied to that mesh, which are going to create that effect for you. And the important thing to note is if you don't like the initial result from your custom settings, you can actually change that in the particle settings tab here as essentially your wing at a certain point becomes a particle system which breaks apart in a way that your particle settings panel controls. So I'll go ahead and enable the explode modifier here really quick. And let's see here. As you can see, we're a little bit later in the explosion here. Let's go ahead. I'll go to frame 168. All right. So this is essentially what that quick explode modifier is going to do. And depending on what you want to go for, you can go and uh, change your particle settings here to uh, get different results. But for this specific example, we used a particle emission number at 100. And then uh, we changed the normal velocity of our mesh explosion to 16. And essentially, that was pretty much it. We uh, did this in a pretty rudimentary way. But once you add the explosion and then the particle debris through chaos and everything on top of it it's going to kind of blend together in a way that i think ended up looking pretty cool and you can also animate this to keep going with the plane i thought it was kind of cool to have it explode and then you know kind of like the air just holding it back from the rest of the jet i'm not sure that's entirely realistic when it comes to physics but i thought it looked pretty cool so i just went for it and then for the particle debris that i added for the final step i uh, had that go with the jet a little bit more to uh, create a little bit of variation in the blast and uh, finally, the last step for creating our explosion was adding those uh, various particle fields through chaos. So we uh, added some glass particles and some sparks and used the omnidirectional burst for those as well. And I'll go ahead and enable those. As you can see, we have our glass particle emitter and our spark particle emitter. I'll go ahead and turn those on. And as you can see here, now we have a lot more smaller particles in addition to our larger wing particles here, which I think really creates the result that looks pretty cool. I'll go ahead and go here to the beginning of our explosion. And we've also parented these omnidirectional bursts to the airplane as well. Again, just like our smoke fire fuel fields, those are going to automatically move with the airplane itself. And because they're moving and the particles are taking the initial velocity from the particle emitter themselves, because the dynamic particle setting is turned on, all of these particles are going to use the uh, animation that's already applied to them to create kind of a very realistic physical result. So yeah, this is all the debris combined to create the explosion and all of those debris fields. And I was pretty happy with this result. I did play around with a little bit of the particle settings to uh, get a little bit different results. For example, um, when I select the glass particle system here and go to the particle tab, you can see I use 2400 particles. So 2400 particles blasting out over a few frames here. And uh, I was pretty happy with that result. And for these sparks, I also increased that to 500, a little bit less sparks, just because I feel like the glass debris was looking a little bit better. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much what we did to create this final result. I also, as usual, adjusted the uh, physics settings here. I brought up the drag a little bit to 0.8 and the dampening to 0.03. And uh, I used these two settings in our particle debris fields just to uh, kind of control the radius of the particles. You can also uh, change the normal velocity of the initial particle system to change how fast the particles blast out and create that explosion. But one of the things that I like to do is I like to use the normal velocity setting here to define how fast the particles initially go out. And then I use the uh, physics forces here drag and dampening tools to control how far those particles actually go out before they slow down and that generally allows you to have a little bit more control of the look of your simulation because if you uh, don't have these on the particles are just going to keep going for a long time based on their initial velocity and you're not going to be able to create as dense of a particle fuel field which might not look as good so uh, yeah that's pretty much it i'll go ahead and enable the smoke domain here one more time for you guys just so uh, you can see the explosion and everything in preview mode combined with these uh, debris fields go ahead and turn this on here and uh, yeah this is our final preview for our jet explosion as you can see we have some pretty nice detail in the fire here the high resolution noise carved it up pretty good in retrospect I might have increased the high resolution noise to three but I think with all the motion blur and everything it all blends together pretty well so I'm still pretty happy with it and uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with this result the airplane wing kind of drags off here and then you have these sparks and glass chaos debris fields 
over here that kind of bring everything together in my opinion. And finally, after building our airplane explosion and all of our various particle debris fields, the last step I did for this animation was creating the environment around the airplane itself. And that was a fairly simple process. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and again, disable our uh, smoke domain here just so we can move a little bit faster. And the last element that I added here was our background environment. So I'll go ahead and turn this on. I'll go ahead and go to uh, rendered mode here. So essentially the environment of our scene here is comprised of two photos. I went to cgtextures.com and downloaded this mountain range photo with an alpha channel. And then I used the import images as planes option here. And I imported one version of the photo and duplicated it a bunch of times and then placed them throughout the scene. And then I actually turned these images as planes into plates by turning them into emission layers in our shading settings. So they're not actually being lit by Blender itself. They're not really CG, but I just wanted to them to be kind of like photos in the background. So to do that, you would just go to the shading tab here and uh, under images as planes, they'll come in with the color connected to the base color, which will essentially just turn it into a diffuse material, which you can actually light with various lights inside a blender. But if you want to just use it as a picture in the background, that's emitting light, creating kind of like a virtual environment around your scene, similar to basic camera projection, you would actually just take the image and you would also plug it into the emission input here and then also by default your alpha channel will be plugged into the alpha channel input here as well which is going to make the sky above your mountains clear as they should be so that you can add whatever sky you want in your compositing process and uh, yeah so we have a bunch of emission planes here to create the environment and as you can see here when we go to camera view they look pretty good off into the background and you can see a little bit of a uh, stitching issue here but generally I think it looks pretty good I did the same thing for the ground plane here I uh, downloaded another image off of textures.com of a, uh, a ground landscape and then I rotated it down on the x-axis to create kind of a ground and again once you add all that motion blur it's gonna bring everything together and finally the scene was getting a little bit messy so I just selected all of the environment planes and just combined them into one image which is why you see everything connected here for this final project file but initially these were all just separate planes that I combined together later and uh, yeah this was our final result after finishing up the environment as usual I rendered out all the different layers separately so for example I rendered out the jet as well as the explode modifier on the wing on one layer with an alpha channel and then I rendered the environment projection separately and then the explosion separately with an emission pass output as well and then finally I rendered out the glass debris field as well as the sparks debris field and then finally I rendered out the glass debris field as well as the sparks debris field on their own separate layers as well so that we have a little bit more freedom for control in the final composite it was essentially a matter of compositing all those different layers together adding a little bit Bit of motion blur some glow some color correction and uh, yeah those were our final outputs anyways guys this video is getting a little bit long already i'll do a video on the compositing process of all those different layers inside of after effects next week so stay tuned for that as always feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below and i'll see you guys next time